Hello everyone and welcome to Jumperman Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do ever in DIY and today we have a service call for a refrigerator it has trouble starting. Thank you to everyone tuning in Jumperman Tech. We are now behind the refrigerator here you can come through. And with this compressor, which is actually said it's a Samsung compressor, is having some trouble starting. Look, the cover is actually missing. And it's a little bit of a mess in here. Anyways, I made a video before on the hard start kit, but we're gonna be installing one on this refrigerator so you guys can all see how it's done. Here's my hard start kit. And instead of changing out the current relay like we have here, we're gonna use this kit and it's actually pretty cool. But anyways, this can be used with or without a run capacitor. There's a couple things you wanna identify. So it's a relay, overload, overload, and start compressor all together. It's for refrigeration systems and it says with or without a run capacitor. And they show you how this is wired. If there's a run capacitor, that's the way it's wired. If not, just eliminate that from the equation and go straight to the compressor. You want to identify voltage. In this case, we have 120 volts. And you want to identify the horsepower of the motor so you can get the right rating. This right here is a half horsepower, 120 volt, universal three-in-one start. Other, known, other one known as a hard start kit. You'll notice that there's wires on two sides of this casing. These two right here is gonna be your power wires. And these three right here are the ones that are gonna go on the compressor. You'll notice there's already some attachments like these little uh, solderless connectors for these three. That's gonna go directly onto your compressor. And then these are gonna be your power wires. And basically coming out of your thermostat, what starts this thing or whatever comes in the way to start this thing, that's what needs to be energized for 120. If we look here, I can see Let's see, this cord right here, two wires, those are gonna be my power wires, and the rest goes on the compressor. First things first, of course, be safe, disconnect your power. In this case, it's plugged in. Make sure you turn and cut your power off. Then we gotta remove these wires right here. For 120, you could probably put the power wire on e and e either one, to be honest, but I can tell already just by by this wiring that this red wire is going on top that's gotta be that's gotta be the common let's see can i oh man i got this coil in my way let's just pull that out so the current relay is now out man i think it's greasy current relay is now out you can see the one on top that's gonna be our common can we pull this whole thing out Oh yeah. Let's see. Okay, so these four wire, like so these are definitely our power wires here. But then those right there actually go to a series of capacitors. If you can see in that little casing right there, the one on the bottom is a run capacitor, the other one is a start capacitor. You honestly don't exactly need it. We're gonna try it without the capacitors. If, if there is those, we will, if we have a problem, we'll incorporate those. But right now, we're just gonna focus on these two wires right here, and that's gonna be our power wires. It's actually three that I cut here, but as you can see, one, two, and three, those are cut. We need to incorporate it, we'll incorporate it after. Either way, this is a really tricky looking one, but these two should be our power wires. We're gonna incorporate that. We'll know where, what goes where, and we'll do our best. So the top one is definitely, this right here is our common, which goes in, so I guess this is also must be an overload as well, incorporated there. So let's, let's cut that there, that's done. And then this black wire, Another power. Let's see what we can do. That's gonna go. That's gonna be our power coming in. Let's just put this back a little, so we have a little bit more space to work with. Strip that back, and let's set this up. 
installed plenty of these and I never really incorporated the capacitor. A lot of times you actually don't see them as much or maybe I never noticed it, but it doesn't matter. Usually I don't use that. I just connect directly to the compressor and this thing does its thing. So let's strip some of this wires back. Let's see if this thing works. Okay, so if we look closely, these two power wires is gonna come to the basically what powers this compressor and those are the two wires coming off of here. So the two power wires right there is connected. That's that. And then these three, it's very simple to install this. You just gotta figure out where your power wires are. And then these three go onto your compressor. All right, guys, this is done. I tie wrap this to the suction line so this thing is good. So we got our two power wires as I showed you guys, right? And then we have our three wires here going to the compressor. Let's see if you can get a better look in there. But pretty much, let's see if we can see in there. That's a bit hard to see still, maybe from here. Well, basically the top wires are common. I put black there. Our run terminal, which is on the right, goes to red. And our start goes to white. I'm sorry, I take a picture so you guys can see a little better. But pretty much, I follow the diagram here. So line is line. Let's see if you guys can see. So uh, common, start, run. So on the right side is run, red to run, white to start, and black to common. Alright guys, I got my multimeter on amps, wrapped around one of the wires, I'm gonna plug it in, and let's see what happens. 18 amps started, came off the start winding, and look, that compressor is running at 6.3 amps, condenser fan motor is running, and everything's good to go. If you wanted to incorporate the run capacitor, sure. But this thing pretty much does everything. I never really seen those incorporated and we're good to go. 5.8 amps, 5.7. I was thinking of possibly using some of this. I call it band iron, but it's basically galvanized hanger strap. It's like rolled with holes. I would wrap that around there and figure out a place to get that going. But as you can see, look, we're running. We're at 5.1 amps right now and it's looking pretty good. I got this little air gun. This thing is amazing. It's gonna blow out some of this dirt. Got a lot of stuff here. Look at that dust. Get that thing out of here. Along the coil, everything's good. Fan was definitely running, and look, it just shut down. And based on this temperature reading, we're at basically 40 degrees. Thermostat in here looks a little crazy. And if you look at it, it's actually set a bit higher than 40 degrees. So this thing is doing its thing. If anything, I'll lower it a little bit. And honestly, I'll recommend I need a new thermostat. This thing should be uh, checking return air. This thing just hanging in the box crooked. Yeah, that's not cool. But anyways, this box is good to go. No reason to check the pressures because we know that the temperatures are operating well. I lowered the thermostat a little bit. You can see it started up right again. Everything's perfectly fine and most likely we're gonna be good to go. Oh man, they could definitely use a little bit of maintenance here. I gotta clean this up a little bit with what I can, but man, it's a lot better here blowing all that dirt out. Alright guys, everything's operating and we're gonna let it be. Box is cooling. We're a little bit lower than 40 now or at 40 and we're good. We had a little temperature adjustment. Now this thing is starting, no problem. Amps are good and we're at temperature, so no reason to check pressures. It's such a tiny system, you don't want to lose any refrigerant, even though I always use probes where you don't really lose much. But either way, 
we are good to go. If anyone found this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe as I come out with new videos every week. Catch you all next time.